John O'Shea joins us on RaceNet TV. Going to have a quick look at Caulfield first. John, we'll start with Asher Can in the Guineas. Yeah, obviously uh, he's raced very consistently all preparation uh, without winning, um, but this is his grand final. Um, he's met a couple of tracks recently that have been just a little bit firmer than he would like them and still race well. We're just hoping for a little bit of fire out of the track. It doesn't necessarily need to be wet, but you know, just to help him, uh, he just prefers it with a bit of, bit of jar out, mate, you know. So uh, he's very, very fit racehorse. Um, he's had a couple of goes at Caulfield, which he's needed. And uh, I just saw it the other day on the bend when James asked him to extend. He just got a little bit lost. Mm -hmm. First go around Caulfield. Uh, I think he probably dropped two lengths of the bend and got beat a length and a half. So it was a pretty telling move, ultimately. Um, I think on Saturday um, that won't happen. And, and they're predicting a little bit of rain, so the track shouldn't be as firm. And you know, I'm expecting a, a really good showing. Just that two, you talked last start, um, sort of dropped two lengths, picked it up again. In the Golden Rose, we sort of saw that as well. He looked like he was beaten off and he came again. Yeah, he's probably looking, you know, definitely looking for the mile. I might look for 2,000. Um, the Golden Rose probably suited him, you know, fast run 1,400, up on the speed. He's a really resilient sort of horse. Um, you know, even if we'd have rode him a pair or two back, he might have sort of been in the fin right in the finish, you know. So, uh, look, he's raced very well, you know, all season. Uh, albeit he's only had the three, but they've been good, three good consistent runs. Has been beaten less than three lengths at any of his runs. And, uh, you know, the Golden Rose has traditionally been a very good form race for any group one going forward, and especially for the place getters. So uh, hopefully it'll eventuate for us. We saw Helmet run third in the race last year and come out, or third on protest, and yeah. come out and win the Guineas. Oh, look, he can go back historically. Uh, you know, I think Graham's horse even, um, you know, he, when he ran third in subsequent group one winner at a later stage. So... You know, I'm sure he's going to win a group one at one stage, uh, hopefully it's sad day. You know, we're under no illusions as uh, to how good Piero is, but um, you know, we've got a fit racehorse that's going to race very well. Okay. Speaking of fit racehorses, Steps in Time st steps out as well. She's the last start winner, of course. Yeah, look, she, uh, she's taken a couple of runs to come to end mm. and then um, and put in a really good performance the other day. Uh, got them off the bit. And, you know, first horse come out of the race there, uh, dare to dream, raced really well at Wait for Age at his next start, so uh, mm. race probably had a bit of merit. Um, she's dropping down in weight for her, which is a, is a really positive uh, thing. Um, you know, eight kilos from her and, and uh, more Joyce is going to make it interesting because mm. um, we'll make sure that more Joyce carries a weight, mm. you know. So, uh, you know, uh, look, I think she run really well. Um, to say you're going to beat more Joyce, well, obviously that's a big challenge, but... Um, like I say, we're going to make sure that they carry their weight. And with 52 for her, it's, it's just a postage stamp, you know. So uh, she's been racing around in Group 2 and Group 3 races in Sydney against the boys, carrying 56. Yep. Um, you know, 52 on Saturday, you know, like I say, we're going to really let her run and we'll see if they want to carry their weight. High cruising speed, low weight's always a good recipe. Yeah, and particularly around Caulfield. Mm. You know, um, she's probably a little bit suspect at a genuine mile in Sydney. I don't think she'd be suspect around Caulfield at a mile, so... Uh, yeah, look, I'm really looking forward to running now. The last of your trio down in Melbourne uh, will be uh, Hossa Moore. It's probably our best chance on the day. Um, worked sensationally Tuesday. Um, really good performance first up in, yeah. in a strong class race. Um, you know, Snitzeland, <coughs> probably equal favourite against uh, the other Snitzel from Queensland in, in the Blue Sapphire. Uh, sizzling. Sizzling. Yep. So, um, and she's probably a benchmark for three Ross sprinters at the moment in Australia. So... Um, there's no Snitzelands in this race. Um, she gets well treated at set weights and penalties, uh, being a model stakes winner. Uh, had a run in Melbourne and, and really jumped out of the ground since. So uh, I thought the gate probably was perfect. Um, speed drawn outside her, she'll roll forward and, and probably get to you know one out, one back with that speed cross and uh, she'll be very hard to hold out. And that's the spot for her, just going back to that Snitzeland race. She was behind Snitzeland, it's very hard. You know, to sit there and be dictated to and out sprint a horse like Snitzeland. Oh, look, uh, and if you look at her, she was sort of third fence, sort of mm. smoking a pipe. And once Damien eased uh, on a lead owl, sort of, yeah. he might have eased a bit slower than he probably should have. But <laughs> 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 uh, it probably, you know, I think if Damien crosses, then it's a different ball game yeah. for us anyway, you know, because yeah. then we go and sit outside Snitzeland and, 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 you know, Nash is pretty hard boat to push you out of the way. So, um, no, look, she raced very well. Um, and I'm tipping a, a, even a better performance that day. Beautiful. Coming up to Sydney, John, uh, I see smart uh, mare, Colorado Claire. Yeah, she's probably been a little disappointing, uh, but I put the blinkers on her early on because I've always been wanting to do it, and it's probably backfired, to be fair. Uh, she over-raced on both occasions and uh, and just couldn't ever quite finish the race off, so we dropped those off. She had one start 1,500 metres at Rose Hill where she 
she won and won a group two. Uh, she's won there previously, won a 1400 there as well, so she's got a good Rosie record. Um, but she probably needs to get a bit of a wriggle on, um, and hopefully uh, Saturday's the start of that. Drinks all round, John, progressive type? Yeah, progressive stay in me. Um, one first up, uh, then went to Wyong and, and ran very well, uh, and slowly run race. Um, back to the 15.50, not suited the other day, and a slowly run 15.50, and you know, I was obviously looking for a bit further. On Saturday, uh, you know, up to a suitable distance on a big track, nice and fit, in with Jimmy, so uh, anything could happen. You know, Jim just, I haven't seen the field yet to work out what we'll be doing, but you know, either box seat or lead, and you know, it'll be very hard to hold out. She's really looking for the trip. Awesome, all the best. Yeah, of our team, you know, um, you know, he looks well placed, and the others obviously in very hard races, and uh, but you know, hopefully she's our best chance. Good luck. Cheers, mate.